Hey everyone, welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. What If is a sexy thriller that follows Lisa and Sean Donovan, an ambitious young couple that enters a dubious contract with a wealthy and manipulative venture capitalist played by Renee Zellweger. Today I'm talking to Blake Jenner, who plays Sean, a good guy who just starts to make questionable decisions. Take a look. Thank you so much. How you doing today, Blake? I'm good. I'm good. Excited to talk about this show. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a good show. I went in last night just to watch one episode, just to kind of get a feel for it. Ended up watching three because it's one of those just sort of binge worthy. And once you watch one, you you have to keep watching. Like you yeah. have to know where it goes. So is that how you felt when you started reading the script? Oh, absolutely. When I uh, when I read the first episode, before I talked to uh, our creator Mike Kelly, I was just ready to binge the whole yeah. whole series. I wanted to read all of them. Uh, and then once, uh, you know, he was walking me through every character's journey and the whole the whole project, I was just hooked. So it's definitely something that latches on to you and you kind of, kind of can't turn away. It's just that, like, kind of addicting and gritty and and just just unlike anything that's out there, I think. Right, and you mentioned Kelly. He is the guy who created it. He also created uh, Revenge. So if Revenge. you liked that show, it's like that similar sexy tone where there's just so many plot twists that you really don't know where it's going to go. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's so unpredictable. That's why when we were working on the show, all of us were just like gossiping, like, what do you think's going to happen? Yeah. What's going on? Like, it's just so intense, and it, you can't really pin it down. Right. Such a crazy adventure. I gave a general description in my lead-in, but how do you describe this show to people when they ask? <laughs> oh, man, where do I start? Um, well, you know, you're following these two uh, cash-strapped newlyweds, uh, Lisa, played by the wonderful Jane Levy, and Sean, played by the schmuck right here. And um, uh, she's a scientist. She's trying to keep her biotech company afloat, uh, but they're hitting rough times. Uh, and he's been trying to, like, be her rock and... It's bartending, working on jobs, but by chance they meet this uh, very powerful financier in the form of Anne Montgomery, played by the wonderful Renee Zellweger. And she pretty much offers us, she's like, um, I will fund your company in exchange for one night with your husband, and she's going to pay $80 million. So it kind of puts their trust to the test. Yeah. That make, You guys want to watch that, don't you? It's pretty like, wild. W will they? Won't they? Um, <laughs> and we're not going to tell you. But it is interesting. Your character starts off so earnest and sincere. I mean, he's just the best guy. And I'm already seeing that he starts to sort of have all these obstacles and secrets and things that come out. So for you, how much of the ending did you know at the beginning? Did you get all the scripts at once? Or did you have to sort of take it script by script to figure it out? Well, what was nice was we were, we were kind of working week to week. So we'd get a, we'd get a script each week, each week. And this is such a heavy show that it was nice not to have the burden of like all the information from point, you know, every, every single beat in your head. Because then you're, it's kind of tempting to play all of that when you haven't even gotten there yet. But uh, thankfully, Mike had all this cooked up in his beautiful brain. And uh, he walked us through everything. So I knew Sean's everything you know I knew his journey I knew his past he filled me in there's not a lot of uh, stuff with his family but he even he even thought about Sean's family we talked about his parents we talked about everything so I really felt like I had a lot of a lot of skin in the game can you tell us a little bit of that background that you put into Sean oh I just don't want to ruin anything for it I don't want to spoil anything just give but like yeah one you know nugget. yeah there was one where it's just like it's not in the show, but for me, like the way that we uh, we kind of started building him is that uh, you know part of his demon, part of his demons is like his relationship with his father, and uh, there's like a bunch of baggage there, and how he always felt like kind of like a disappointment to his father. He couldn't really get anything right, so that was like that was kind of the chink in his armor at first, and then so many things happened as he just grew older. But that was like kind of like the basis, like my way in. How I understood, yeah. It really does dictate, that family dynamic does dictate how we move through the world. We Absolutely. see that with Lisa's family as well, who plays, who's Sean's wife. Mm -hmm. We see her family a lot and how that's impacted her decisions. And probably one of the reasons she did con continues to go through the contract is to sort of like keep her sister and family's memory alive. Absolutely. And it's even, it's like, it's named after her sister. Like, it's just so, so, so heavy in her heart. That's why it means so much to her. Let's talk about you building the relationship with the two women, your two co-stars, oh, yeah. Renee and Jane. Um, you have distinctly different relationships with both characters in the show. Mm -hmm. So what sort of work did you guys do off camera to sort of make sure those dynamics, that, that chemistry felt realistic? Yeah, so once, once Jane and I were hired, uh, we reached out to each other um, or email. We were like, well, let's get together. Let's, let's talk through all of this. And we sat down, we had some dinner, we cracked open a bottle of wine, we got to, we got to know each other, and then we started laughing. But uh, I feel like with, with this kind of thing, especially when you're, when you're trying to, you know, when you're trying to, 
you know, really feel feel this connection with these two people who love each other so much. You really have to become best friends in real life. And I, th I feel like that was a big part of our homework, getting getting comfortable with each other. And we started off with a bang. The first thing we shot was our marriage when we got married. So I'm here speaking in front of a bunch of extras that I don't know, but I'm pretending like they're our family. And I'm looking at it, it's our first day, looking, I'm just like telling her my vows and everything. But but starting off that strong, it really, it really made us made us trust each other, and that was like the key. That was we we talked about how, how much this show relied on this relationship, and I have to really really care for this couple. So that meant a lot to us. And then Renee, I was just fanboying when I met her. I went, What do you mean? Oh well, when I first <laughs> I first went out, when I first met her when we when we started shooting, I was like I, I got to be honest about something. And she's like what? She's so sweet. And I was like, I just watched Jerry Maguire for like the fiftieth time last night, and you were just so incredible. And she was like, let she was so sweet. She'd let me uh, try out my crummy impressions on her, and she'd just say, like, give me courtesy laughs. She's just she's just wonderful. But what I took from her was first of all how amazing she is. I mean, she is the complete opposite of this character, and she kills as Anne Montgomery. She is such a force of nature. Um, she's just amazing. It was it was really inspiring to watch her work. You know, we didn't have to do too much because thankfully with our with our relationship on the page, you didn't really have that. You just had to like react and be be there and kind of take this, this these like torment of like moments and, and and stride, you know, with her. So it was nice to kind of just not have to not to poke and prod at that relationship too much. Just take it as it as it came along. But just watching her work, watching how warm she is with everyone. I mean, it was just so inspiring. She's just such an amazing artist and person. Yeah, I mean, her character is. Uh, diabolical, <laughs> maybe is the best way to describe her. And I love her. Oh, I know. I find myself sort of like making excuses for Anne. And I'm like, yeah. you know, she's probably been through a lot. You kind of want to. You she's so of, interesting. Yeah, so what is your kind of feel on, on her? Is she a true villain or is she just maybe misunderstood? No, I think she's misunderstood. And I think everybody, you know, everybody, every villain thinks that they're, you know, they're coming out they're coming at a whole situation from like a wound, you know, from like this where they were wronged or like certain certain corner of their heart that they just they haven't quite figured out yet. So I think she feels like she's in the right, but um, but she's just so powerful and diabolical. It's kind of cool to see her kind of have that balance between having this heart and not wanting to show too much and then just like annihilating anybody that gets in her way. Yeah, and it's that badness is also so sexy. Yeah. I mean, her character is so sexy, but there also is this kind of just sexy undertone to the entire show. Mm -hmm. um, so what sort of notes do you guys get before you go into those scenes? Because they're not, it's not overtly <laughs> sexual. It's not like, but it's just like the tone and the music yeah. and the vibe and the dialogue is all very sexy. Yeah, well, there wasn't, it wasn't like we were like huddled up and be like, we gotta be so sexy today. <laughs> like get the, get the sex game strong. Um, <laughs> But um, no, I think it, all of those all of those elements that make it such a such a binge worthy show and li and like you said, sexy and dark and gritty. I think it's because we're just coming coming at it from an honest place, and I think all of those things working together. We knew what we were making, but we also knew we like we have to care about these people. We have to treat this like it's do or die. So I think we weren't really trying to have any of that like premeditated in any way. I think it just kind of came together. It was just the right people, right time. Just a bunch of naturally sexy people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know how I slept on, but yeah, everybody else is wonderful. Oh, stop it. Um, so what was your reaction then when you read the finale? You don't have to tell me what the finale is, but I've heard it's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I read it, it, it's like a combination of things. You're going on this ride with, with these characters, and like by this time, I felt like I had a second family. I'd go, go to work, and Jane is my wife, and then we have our little dog, and... <laughs> And uh, yeah, so reading it was like extremely emotional. But you know what? It's just I don't want to ruin anything. So you're not gonna get anything out of me. But it, it's really cool how you kind of see it come full circle in its own way. You know, and it's not like you know. It's just it's very real. It's very very. It's rooted in reality for sure. It's rooted in reality because I think instantly the viewer is forced to answer that question. What would I do? What would you do? Yeah. What's my relationship to my ambition and my success and my family? How would I negotiate this? Um, have you asked yourself this question? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I still don't have an answer. I'd like to think, no. But I did ask my mom one time. She was like, $80 million for a night with, your, with my husband? You can have him. <laughs> right. <laughs> so she, 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 that was her answer. Um, but it's nuts. I mean, that's a lot of money. You can do a lot of good. So I think that's what they're thinking. You know, it's like, oh, this is you know, a bump in the road, but this is gonna end up making everything okay. Right. But then you have the ripple, like every 
every shortcut comes with its own with its own surprises. You know. I mean, I'd take the money, I think. You'd take the money? Yeah. What because am I saying? I'm here trying to be a Boy Scout. I'd probably take the money. Right, I feel like we'd all take the we'd money. All take the, would you guys take the money? Right? Yeah. $80 million dollars for one night with your partner? We're all horrible people. No, I'm just <laughs> We're all garbage people. <laughs> Um, so what has the feedback like been like for you with this project? Because this is something kind of different for you. Yeah, no, it's been it's been wonderful. And this is the first time I get to play someone close to my age. I get to play a man. He's a committed husband. It was really cool to kind of to dive into that. But it's been it's been wonderful. Like friends and family are so supportive and they're excited about it. But just to see how the fans are diving in, you know, we see the responses on Twitter and it's just so exciting to see that the people are and there's so many characters that it's interesting to see who's who's kind of siding with who or who's finding themselves within which character, and it's such a great ensemble. But it's really nice to see it resonating with everyone. And I really love, what I think I take away from the show is that you know, in a world where there's so much expedited information and everybody's trying to be like the next big thing on YouTube, so like trying to find that shortcut, it kind of goes to show that you know, it's about the journey and some shortcuts aren't worth what they'll do to your life and, and anything worth having is not easy to achieve. It's all about the journey, which is a theme I like in this show. Yeah, I agree. I think when you watch this show, uh, you start identifying with characters that maybe you didn't think you would or supporting them in a way that you would, and it makes you question your own morality. Absolutely, and you kind of, you think you know these people um, from the start, you know, you, you kind of, you're like, oh, this is that guy, this is that, but the way that it dives into past, into the each character's past in such an interesting way, like you realize, you're like, oh my God, like, these people are on a journey. I'm getting to know them in the wildest way, in, the, in like a wild emotional roller coaster. It's so crazy. You mentioned that you're getting to play an adult man on this show, and I think that's because you got your start with the Glee Project. Yeah. Um, when you look back at that experience, though, and the impact it's had on your career and just your visibility and opportunity, um, to start off in a reality format like that and be able to do what you've done, uh, have you been able to process that or take that in? I'm still waking. I'm still still waking up from it all. It's it's pretty crazy. But yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for the Glee Project, and I I I'm still friends with a lot of them. And I I talked to Abraham Lim, who was on the Glee Project with me, and I'm like, you know, sometimes I just want to go back. It was just so fun. Yeah, it was just like a break from the world, and you really I learned so much. And the fact that we were just working at it every day, you really you really kind of felt like you were doing a school play, and you were just you were doing this because you absolutely loved it. Did you but, get your start in musical theater, or what was kind of your entry point? Yeah, well, I knew, I um, I, I started off writing short stories as a kid, and I used to recite them in front of my class in, like, fourth grade. And that's when I started making people laugh. I was like, oh, this is fun. Like, I, I was like, this is, this is cool. I want to do something like this. But then I started doing drama in middle school and high school and doing musicals and doing plays. But, yeah, that was kind of my end when I fell in love with it. And I'm the youngest of four boys. And uh, there's a pretty big age gap, so once I got to kind of speak my mind in the arts, that's when I kind of realized that I had opinions that I wanted to uh, explore a little more. Are you still writing? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I have, uh, I don't want to, we're, we're trying to get a movie made, me and my buddy, it's a comedy. Uh, I don't want to say too much, because we're still, we're kind of like figuring things out contractually on, on certain things, but, uh, but it's, it's so funny. And I haven't gotten the, op the opportunity to do much comedy. And that's what I grew up doing. Grew up doing like improv and stuff like that. So it's just really nice to dive back in there and flex those muscles a little bit. What impact has working on a show like this or doing the movies that you've done had on your writing and your creative process? Is it like an inspiring thing that you're constantly like evolving? Oh yeah, and and I've been lucky enough to work with some really cool, you know, people that I look up to. So just watching their process and you know, from all the opportunities I've had, it's it it kind of fuels your your tank, you know, you're, you're just like, okay, so maybe this is, you're kind of shadowing their whole creative process. So from every job, I've, I've learned so much. Yeah, and I'll continue to, you never stop learning. That's so good. Well, before we go, we do have a couple of questions from the audience. Let's do it. So who do we have first? Hi, Blake. Uh, can you give us some uh, sneak peek into the type of character? So what do you always want to do? I mean, you haven't done yet. Oh, and like a character that I haven't done yet? Yeah. Oh well, I love I love getting dark and gritty. I wrote a I wrote a movie a while back uh, called Billy Boy, and that was about this kid from like a broken home. He kind of runs with the wrong friends and finds like inspiration, but it's kind of taken from him. So I kind of like I love characters that go from one to ten, but in a completely seamless way. So just to play someone that's different from me each time, it kind of keeps me on my toes and also kind of helps me learn and you know, prove myself. I'm, I'm very much a big, I'm a big fan of proving ground. So just something wild, something dark, whether it's a, you know, a drug dealer, 
I don't know. It's just something on the streets. Anything, anything. It's it's just something that always tests me and makes me scared. Because then if I'm excited about it, then that'll just be in the work and vibrant and and real. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Is there a character from a book, a play, a movie that you look at and you're like, I would love to try a oh, yeah. character like that? Uh, yeah. Well, Jim Carrey and Dumb and Dumber for sure. Uh, and then Leonardo DiCaprio in Basketball Diaries. I fell in love with that movie growing up. I probably shouldn't have been watching that as a kid, but uh, but uh, I was crazy about it. And I was like, somebody can do this and be in the movie. This is, this is him acting. It was just incre- so inspiring. That's so cool. yeah. Next question. Hi. Um, so this is definitely different than the majority of things you've done in the past. So is it more <laughs> difficult to <laughs> do these things, like prepare for this role than others? Um, <clears throat> some days more than others, you know, like the, when I, when I danced Backstreet Boys, I mean, that was easy. That's like just me. When I read that in the script, I was like, oh my goodness. I was like, I love it. And I think I even stole some moves from Glee during that scene. Um, but then other things, yeah, other things I have to like listen to music to get into it. Or like I have this stream of consciousness exercise that I really like to kind of get into the mindset of this character. So this one was, was pretty challenging because of how how heavy it could be at times, you know, and how, how you know, one one look from Renee can just like shatter your soul, you know, these characters. So you really had to had to play that up and, and it was challenging at times. Yeah, definitely definitely the most challenging um than any other job I feel like I've had. What music does Sean listen to to get into Seanness? <laughs> BB Mac. No. Um <laughs> uh I don't know. I th- I, I, I kind of <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with BB Mac. BB Mac's awesome. Um, uh, no, Sean. I think it was like just different moods. You know, if he was upset, I'd listen to like '90s Eminem. Or if he was like having fun, like in, in a loving scene with with Jane, with Lisa, maybe he's listening to like you know the Beatles or, or you know something something cool and light. You with know. R&B. Yeah, yeah. It's just boys to men. Just, yeah. You can never go wrong with little boys to men. Oh, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, this is the show that once people start, they will not be able to stop. That is guaranteed. It is such a binge-worthy show and such a fun ride. So congratulations. Thank you so uh, much. And if you guys want to check out What If is streaming now on Netflix, and yes. it together for Blake Jenner. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. 